Look who's joining us now, Gary Cohn. He's the chief economic advisor to President Trump. Gary, welcome back to the program. Good to see you, sir. It's great to be here, Stuart. Thanks for having me. Tax cuts look like they're going to be done by Christmas or by New Year's. Does that mean that your job is done and you're moving on soon? <laughs> a absolutely not. The, oh. the pres President Trump has a very robust economic agenda, and I'm really excited to be part of it. We've got a lot to do in the new year. We've got to get to infrastructure. We've got welfare reform. We still have a, a, a deregulation agenda going on. Uh, we've got a lot to do, Stuart. We're, 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 we're just getting started. Okay. <laughs> Tell me about the negotiations that are going on now about the final version of the tax cut deal. We hear sure. there's a possibility that you'll move the top corporate tax rate up to 22 percent, and that helps you uh, get rid of some of the deduction for state and local taxes. Not get rid of that deduction, but bring it back a little bit. Could there be that kind of deal? So, Stuart, look, you, you know exactly where we are. Think of, think of where we are. Think of the unprecedented event that's going on in the country right now, something that hasn't happened in 31 years that President Trump's going to deliver, as you said, as a great Christmas present to the American public. We have a bill through the Senate and through the House. Both have passed with a 20 percent corporate tax rate. Right now, the conference committee is working to conference the differences between the two bills. There's no difference in the two bills on the corporate tax rate. So... Right now, we are stuck at the 20 percent, not stuck, we are stuck at a great level of 20 percent in the corporate tax rate. That makes us really competitive with the rest of the world. It's going to drive business back to the United States. It's going to drive real wage growth. When you look at the, the unemployment report today, the one number in there that sticks out that's not a number that's a great number, the rest of the numbers are really great, is the wage growth number. We really need to drive wages in this country. The president has committed to the public that he's going to work to drive wage growth. The tax reform policy is going to be the tool to drive wage growth in the country. So, therefore, the state and local tax deduction is gone. And uh, even middle class, high income earners, I mean, certainly middle class people in New Jersey, New York, and California, and Illinois, they are going to be paying more, aren't they? Well, Stuart, in the conference, we are open to other solutions. You know, as, as we've made it very clear to you, the White House laid out a broad brush outline of principles with the group of six. The president's had very few bright lines here, and he's been very flexible on everything else. There are some fixes that the House and the Senate are working on for the salt states. Can As I jump we know, in, Gary? Forgive me for jumping in. I, I do apologize. But the Wall Street Journal had an editorial saying, look, you could fix this problem for the high tax states if you just lowered the top rate of income tax even more. Currently, and, and, you want to bring it down maybe one point. If you brought it down to 35 percent, you fix the problem. And the president's not opposed to that. If they want to bring the top rate down, the president is not opposed to bringing the top rate down. You know, but we have to make sure that our businesses are equally as competitive because the businesses competitive is going to drive wage growth and we have to drive wage growth as well. Maybe we can do both of those. Maybe we can keep the, the corporate rate down and drop and drop the top rate. I think you're just making news there, Gary, because if you did that, I mean, you really would light up the sky. That would be very appealing to California, Illinois, New Jersey, New York City, New York State, Connecticut, Massachusetts. They'd love you. Well, we're, we're trying to do what's best for the American citizens and what's best for our businesses, both small and big, and make them competitive and drive wages and, and, and deliver everything to the citizens of this country that they deserve. Are you selling the plan well enough? Because we got a poll saying only 35 percent of the people approve of the plan. There it is, 35 percent. That's a very low number. You selling it properly? Stuart, is that from the same people that polled the election? <laughs> because, you know, do, what, what do polls tell us these days? They, I mean, look, I, I, we don't really trust these polls. When I'm out talking to people and you're out talking to people, people are going to be very excited when they see their paycheck be uh, bigger. When they, when they get a paycheck next year and it's bigger, they're going to be very excited about that. I, I want you to tell us again, because I want to make news. I really do. <laughs> I want you to tell us again that you're at least thinking about dropping the top rate of federal income tax down to 35 percent. You're at least thinking about it? Stuart, look, the conference committee in the House and the Senate is working on delivering fixes for the salt states. Hmm. They, have, they have the ability to drop the top rate. The president will be supportive of that. Okay. Uh, that's a sound bite, Mr. Cohen, and it's going to be used a lot. Thanks very much. Now, uh, Paul Ryan, in that radio interview two days ago, 
He says the Republicans are going to tackle welfare reform and maybe rein in Medicare next year. It's kind of setting on the, sitting on the third rail of American politics, isn't it? There's real danger there. No, I, I, think, I think when we get into next year, we've got two big items on our agenda that the president is, is firmly behind. He's, be, he's firmly behind infrastructure and he's firmly behind welfare reform. We stand for both of them. We need to in, improve our infrastructure. I've talked to you many times before, deregulation, tax reform and infrastructure. And we also believe that welfare reform and making people who can work, work and retraining our workforce is going to be very important. As we continue to grow our economy with the tax reform and the deregulation, we're going to need to bring everyone back into the workforce. And retraining our workforce is going to be very important. And welfare reform is going to be part of that. Can you give us a hint as to how big the infrastructure plan might be? I know the details are coming next month, but give me a hint. Look, Stuart. It, the biggest thing we can do in infrastructure, the most important thing we can do, is to speed up the approval process. President Trump talked about this during the summer. He talked about how it takes nine to ten years to get a highway approved. We need to speed that process up to make it less than two years to get a highway approved. There's plenty of money in the system. States have money. Cities have money. Federal government has money. There's private sector money. We need to get that money out, and we need to get it spent. We can't tie that money up for ten years while the approval process takes its winds its way through the, the federal government. You're a Democrat, uh, I believe. I don't know whether you're still a Democrat, but you certainly were a Democrat. Um, President Obama, he wants to take a, just some of the credit for the strong economy that we've got in this first year of the Trump administration. As a Democrat, do you think that President Obama has, uh, has a point there? Stuart, I'm laughing. Do you notice how hard I, 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 I don't know? I don't know if I can stop laughing to answer the, answer the question. I, I, don't even, I don't even know where to start with that one. You know, look, Look, look at what President Trump has done. I, and I can go on for, for a while here. We've had two consecutive quarters of over 3% GDP. We're going to have a third quarter of over 3% over GDP. Look at what we've done in manufacturing. We've created, since President Trump got elected, 16,000 manufacturing jobs every month. Last year, in the Obama administration, for the year, they lost 16,000 manufacturing jobs. Yes, the stock market went up a little bit during the Obama administration, but it went up because it was a carry trade. People bought stocks because the <laughs> dividend yield was higher than bond yield. Right now, look at the stock market up 30 percent, oh, more than 30 percent in certain indices mm. since President Trump's got elected. They're buying stocks not because it's a yield trade. They're buying stocks because people are bullish on the economy and people are excited about what's going on here. You look at the employment report today. We're down, we're down to 2.6% manufacturing unemployment, 4.1% unemployment here. You know, look at business leaders. I've, you talk to business leaders. I talk to business leaders, small business leaders, big business leaders. The NFIB came out with their numbers the other day on how excited their business owners are to hire people. Over 50% of them are hiring people and can't find people in the workforce. The numbers are just staggering. This wasn't happening a year ago. I ran a business a year ago. A year ago, all we were doing is spending money and time dealing with regulation and being worried about the federal government. Now businesses are, being, are excited to invest capital and work with the federal government. You spent more time answering that question than any of the other ones that I've asked this morning. No wonder you're laughing. Okay, I kind of teed it up for you, didn't I? Uh, last one. 4% growth next year. Yes? Yes, sir. I mean, we would have been 4% growth last quarter if it, wasn't for the, if it wasn't for the hurricane. So, you know, we're, we're at 4% basically now. We're continuing to, to, to see growth. We're continuing to see job growth. With, with the tax plan, we're going to easily see 4% growth next year.